You were named officially the most beautiful woman in Georgia. How does that make you feel? It was not like competition. We were like really sisters. Airbrushed or real? Oh, you are successful. You look pretty. You don't have the right to feel sad. Is it lonely being a mom? Clever never means always kind. I agree with that. I had zero help. My country didn't help me at all. Hello everyone and welcome to the Inside Track with me, Luca Allen. I am delighted to welcome Nini. I'm going to call her Nini G because I cannot pronounce her family name, but we'll go into that in a second. Uh, Nini is a TV host and she is a wonderful person. That's all we need to know. Nini, welcome. Thank you so much, Luca, for your time. I really appreciate that you of invited course. me. <laughs> of course. So how do I pronounce your family name? <laughs> so my family name is Gogushaishvili. Gogushaishvili. Yeah, very yeah? good. Yes. And, and tell everyone, where are you from, Nini? So I'm from Georgia. It's a very nice and beautiful country. Not many people, like now they start to know about it. And they, actually for Dubai, it becomes a very great destination where they go for skiing, for the nature. Yeah. So it makes me very happy. It's a small, very beautiful country who fights all the time for its freedom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I've heard some great things about your country. Um, a lot of a lot of people that I know have visited it. They, like you said, they've gone skiing. They yeah. eat a lot of cheese in Georgia. Is that right? Ah, yes, we do. We do. You're famous for your cheese. Actually, we are famous for our wine because we have really like great history of winemaking. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and for cheese and for food and also I would say for very humble and open-hearted people because each time you go to Georgia and you you go to some villages, people yeah. they you know they don't live. Uh, their quality of life is not great, especially in the villages. But as soon as you go there, they give you all what they have. Because yeah. for Georgian, the guest, it's everything. It's yeah. in our culture, it's in our tradition. So for us, it's like everything that to feel you like you are in a home, you are welcome. Yeah. To make you hospitable, yes, you love to host, you love to welcome yeah, people. Exactly. And I think that's what a lot of tourists feel when they go to visit Georgia. So <laughs> the country's doing a great job <laughs> oh, with, uh, with inviting people over. Um, you brought a mug here, I can see. So yes. talk to me a little bit about your mug. Yes, so um, I brought a mug because I moved in Dubai one year and a half ago, so I'm quite new. So all the mugs that means something for me, it's in, in Georgia, like where, where I used to live. So I brought the white mug because it's actually it's a funny story because when I moved in Dubai uh, at the home where I live in a flat, uh, there was nothing. So I had really nothing. So it's the landlord who borrowed me the cup, so at least to be able to drink ah. and do something. And what is fun with this mug is that it's a white color, so yeah. I associate it as a white paper, white beginning, and a new chapter in my life. So Very I nice. brought a white uh, cup, which is white paper for a new chapter. But, but you haven't returned. Uh, but you life. haven't returned your mug. So the landlord gave it to you. <laughs> and does he know that you still have it? Yeah. Is he expecting uh, a year, a year and a half later for your mug to come back? That's brilliant. Uh, but it's a new beginning for you, right? Yes. It's a new chapter. Yes, in your life. new chapter. Like so, I associate this mug as a new chapter where I go for. My dreams, which I could not maybe imagine in Georgia, because I always had the dreams, but maybe this city gave me even bigger dreams, bigger possibilities. So I associate this uh, white paper as a new beginning for a bigger dreams. Very nice. So what are you doing at the moment then? At the moment, I'm... I mean, I know what you're doing, but I, w I want you to... Yes, yeah, yeah. let the people what, uh, the, tell what I'm doing. So for, for the moment, I'm working on a big project, which I cannot talk a lot for the time being. I also, I'm also freelancing because Dubai gives me a lot of opportunity where I meet with the people who I could never imagine to meet in Georgia. So I do freelancing for fashion TV. I do freelancing for Euro News. So yep. each time in Dubai is uh, happening something big, uh, there are big stars who are coming. I'm covering the stories. And I didn't want to go, you know, like sometimes people, they suggest you, it's good if you pick one direction and you go in one direction. But me, I wanted to try myself in many directions. And even if there is something that I don't have big knowledge. I always try to study, to learn about it, to read it and, and to challenge myself. Yeah. So that's how I worked about uh, Solana blockchain. That's how I interviewed Melissa Flaming, who, who is under Janitary Secretary of UN Nation, United Nations. So this city gave me really, really big opportunities to challenge myself, yeah. to leave my comfort zone and uh, to, to meet uh, hopefully my biggest dreams. And you're very famous in Georgia. Yes. <laughs> so why why are you famous in Georgia? So um, actually, my all my family is uh, is 
yes, quite known in Georgia because it, it comes... The family uh, name that I cannot pronounce. Yes, and actually even in Georgia, everyone calls us Gogicha. No, no, no one. Gogic, Gogic. Go, Gogicha, we are known Gogicha, for, for being Gogicha. No one says Gogicha actually because really it's too long. Yes. So, uh, I, I, my, agree, my I, agree, I agree with that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> there is no way not to agree with that. So my, my, I come from the family of um, actress and actors because my grandparents um, are national artists of Georgia. My wow. grandpa, he had made uh, more than 100 Georgian movies, so he's wow. very famous. And even till today, he works in a, in a national theater of Georgia. Uh, then my my family, they were, when I was growing up, uh, and me and my sister, we always used to say that we more saw our parents on the screen than in, inside the home because they were always busy. Uh, they were all the time like uh, making interviews Views. My mom, she she was a very famous uh, journalist in Georgia. My my dad used to be a very famous TV host. He had a, he was working a, he had a programs about the children and every he was every child's hero. Like every, everywhere yeah. we were going, he was the biggest star. Yeah. So that's how I broke up. And you know, it's very hard when you when you grow up in a family of journalists, of actors, of actresses, to go in another way because it was something with what I yeah. grew up and it yeah. was something that I knew that I love it. Yeah. So my first proposal, actually it was uh, very early. I was 17, I was still studying when I got my first job at the TV. So I was I understood that it's the place what makes me happy. So I think that in life uh, it's more it's very important to find something that makes you happy. So if you find something that really makes you happy, you don't have to work any day because you are you working on something yeah, that you it. love. So you're you're enjoying your time. But of course, um, it's a big competition and it's very, very hard to stay where you are. And I, I would say that it's everyday competition because you always have to improve yourself and yeah. there are so many great talents and the time is always changing so yeah. uh, demand is always like you know in a different direction so i think yeah. that if your talent is not followed with your personality and maybe with your kindness um, it's hard to stay on a place so me i decided that my my journey i would dedicate to tv because it's something that really makes me happy yeah. so there are th there are moments when I, I think that oh my god maybe I, I could go with some another profession because I, I see other professions now how how like on demand they are you know like even if you are engineer or you you go with programming and everything but uh, i would still stick with the with tv because it's really like my my biggest passion and something that really makes me happy but you you, you were named miss georgia in yes. 2019 is that right <laughs> yes but so you named officially the most beautiful woman in georgia in 2019 how does how does that make you feel being to be named miss georgia you know like i like it's I think it's one of the main questions that I, um, I'm asked uh, even when I won and afterwards, and I still remain as Miss Georgia. We didn't chose any other Miss for the time being. And I, I always- Oh, so you're still the defending, yes. you're still the defending <laughs> yes, reigning Miss Georgia. Yes. So 2019, 2020, 2021, yes. 2022, 2023, that's fantastic. <laughs> Four years of dominance. Yeah, yeah. So, I, well, for me, and honestly, so, for someone who who is like pigeonholed, it maybe it doesn't sound very honest if I say this, but I really mean it because for me every woman is beautiful. It's just about the personality who goes with what. So for me uh, to be chosen as a Miss Georgia, it was never about uh, being the most pretty girl. It was like beyond it because yeah. this actually this title is not about it's everything but not about being beauty yeah. it sounds a bit silly it's the but whole package yeah it's whole package because why i wanted to go on this um, contest it was because i really wanted to become the ambassador of my country i really wanted to promote my country i really wanted to help a lot of girl and women who are trying to like you know do, who are trying their best to stand on the feet to do something for their families they have small businesses so i really wanted to do something for the girls for their mental health and for the healthy lifestyle because I have a lot of uh, girls who are then who are like 16 15 year old who are asking me advice so I wanted to be kind of like I would not say role model because like a big sister almost like a big sister in some way. yes but yes to be to be a sister for them and to even you know when we when I was at the Miss World like we were like sisters really like we were it was not like competition and who is the best we were like really sisters 
I create beautiful connections with the girls. They are still remaining my friends. And it was one of the most beautiful experiences in my life because these girls really, and I can say it like, like 100%, because they are beautiful inside and outside. And they're really like a sister, so try to help you to, to share with you their traumas, their, their dreams, their journey. So for me, it was always more than just being pretty because you know what? Um, like pr prettiness, it's so subjective. Like for someone, you can be pretty. For other, you cannot be pretty. 100%. And for me, everyone is pretty. So today you're pretty, tomorrow you won't be pretty. And what? Yeah, I have so days where it's, it's, it's there like, are days I never feel pretty. Yeah. Um, so look, there's so many things I want to ask you, right? When oh, you talk about nice. Miss Georgia, then being part of Miss World competition and all that stuff, and then what you're doing afterwards. But before I proceed any further, uh, on my show, I always give my guests uh, a safe word. So yes. if there's a question that I ask that you don't feel particularly comfortable <laughs> with, you're allowed to use a safe word and then I'll, and I'll stop. So is there a certain safe word that you'd like to use? Yes, I think that uh, it will be peace because I think that all what we need and all what earth, mother nature needs is a peace. Uh, peace in the world, peace within ourselves. So I think my safe word is peace. peace. Sounds good to me. Um, I also look, I work in advertising, I work in marketing and I work with some of the biggest and best brands in, in the world. Do you have a favorite brand? I mean, I ask everyone the same question comes on. Do you have a favorite brand uh, out there? And is there a reason why it is your favorite brand? Yes. Well, uh, I think I may sound very sub subjective, but I think I would say it's um, Zara Prana. It's a fine jewelry company based in Georgia. And my sister, she's a painter, and she used to make the collection, her jewelry co collection called Aqua by Nanuka. So I would say it's my favorite brand because it's created by my favorite person on earth, yeah. my, my sister, who is uh, who is everything for me and who is my biggest part. So I, 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 and and really, I love what she does, and she's so creative, and she put it so much love in it. And uh, yes, I would say this. How many, how many do you have? Lots of brothers, sisters. I have one sister. Okay. I have only one sister, and I have also a cousin who is more my brother because three of us we we grew up together. We were okay. even living in one home, so we he's like brother for me. So I would say sister and brother. Very nice. <laughs> so I have to ask you about the Miss World competition. Yes. Uh, just explain the whole the whole thing because there. In terms of the world's population, yeah, you've got to fly. I know, it's, it's annoying, right? It came to me, it came to me, and then it came to you. It's okay, we're going to keep going. Uh, I, was, I was struggling not to say anything. The fly, obviously, the fly likes you. The fly yes. seems to like you. Just keep, I was keep just shaking, shaking my hand yeah, yeah. to try to get rid of yeah, yeah. it. Yes, uh, I said, what, I can give you something to swat it away. <laughs> I said, what, you know what? Try, try this. Try, try. We're going to use this later anyway, so keep this with you. All okay. right? And if it comes close again, <laughs> I'll just try and smack yes, it or something. Yes, yes. I'll um, try to put him in the bed. Very good. So look, I really want to explain, understand the whole Miss World thing. It's, yeah. it's a phenomenon, right? So many yeah. people are glued it's to it, watching it all the time. Very few people ever go on it. Uh, what is that experience like? Um, when I was going to Miss World, you know, like uh, the, uh, your agents, your uh, your mother agency, everyone is telling you that, you know, whatever happens, don't worry. Like, it's all about creating memories. L all will be good. And when I was going there, I had, uh, I, I, I love everything what is real. When I go, like, and I agree to do something, I, I understand what could be consequences. And I'm not someone who, who will say that, ah, oh, it's, it's like... What matters in life is to take it apart. When you go some, somewhere and it's competition, of course you want to win. But yeah. when I was going to Miss World, I had a clear, absolute 100% understanding that Miss World, like, I could never ever win. And it's not because of how I but look. Why? But, or why? but why? But why? I, 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 will explain to yeah. you, I will explain this. It's not because how I look or how I talk or I don't believe in myself. It's not because of this. Because if you see the hist all the history of Miss World or even Miss Universe, uh, Miss World is the most oldest pigeon and um, um, pigeon uh, organ. It's the oldest pigeon. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But never ever you had any small country who wins it. Never ever you had Georgia that won anything, anytime. Never ever. So I. I don't understand uh, this trend because you know even if you see the history of all the all the all Miss Universe Miss World, it's always the same countries mm. who are winning. You know mm. there are kind of favorite countries yes. who are winning. So uh, I was understanding this, but I I think that it would be very good if this changes a bit because yeah. of course it's impossible that from other countries there is no one. So it's neighbor. very political. It's since very, 100 years of so history. So very so very political, right? So you know going into it, there's only maybe. 
five, ten different countries who are likely to win. You know, like uh, having say, said this, all the girls who won, they were worth it because they, like, even if you see them, they are absolutely beautiful. Mm. They are professional. Their projects are completely mind blowing. So it's it depends about the country and what country does for you too. You know, because for example. India, like uh, Philippines, they do a lot for these girls and they, they help them because when you do Miss World, you have your, your project and these projects are like different. So y really it takes a lot of finance and it takes a lot of things to do. So me, for example, in Georgia, I had zero help. I did everything by myself mm -hmm. and uh, with the help of my friends because in Georgia I was a bit famous. So that's the only thing how, how I was helped. So my country, uh, didn't help me at all. So I don't want to blame my country. You know, my country is not uh, super rich. My country doesn't have a lot of possibilities. But I think that if this uh, Miss World, Miss Universe, they could also help yeah. and promote the... So give back like, to, be, to the be other countries. Like, poor countries or mm. developing countries, it would be much nicer. And I think if they if they deep down beat and if they see it with an other side, it would also, it would also help. Because, of course, today, nowadays, Miss World and uh, also Miss Universe, it's not about beauty like so what is of it? course it's yeah what do you about think it's beauty about? too yeah, but yeah. so how do you win it how would you win it what's well, the, what are the ingredients for example there is uh, there is a nomination which which you can win um depending on your project and this project can be different for example um i uh, if i if i'm not uh, mistaken five or six years ago um there was a pigeon from india and she did a project where she helped girls on their cycle because on their cycle the women they didn't had the, they couldn't afford to yeah. to to take any hygienic measure, measurements and because of this their blood was poisoning and they were dying oh, wow. so she helped them so when a girl comes and she does such a big project of course she she she's supposed to win because she's doing something for yeah. nation then there was another another girl who did um, uh, for elderly people, she funded to do the teeth because they could not they could not eat and mm. their, their level of their life was very poor. But when you do such a big project, it's impossible to do it without help of your country because yes. y you don't have the means to yeah. do it yeah. alone. So there are many many factors uh, which helps you, of course. And one of the main reasons is also how your country is involved, yeah. like how your country stands next to you. Yeah. Going back to you, did your whole life change when you were named Miss Georgia? Um, I would not say so, that my whole life changed. Uh, because uh, before I did Miss Georgia, uh, I, was, I was very active in my country. I was working, I was studying. And uh, I came did back actually. To me, the fly, yes, it's come back to me. <laughs> he wants to be with us. It's yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. You can, you can be on the show the next and, episode. And actually, Miss Georgia was my grandpa's biggest dream. And he was always asking my mom, oh, but uh, she will do it, she will do it, please, she can do it. And then uh, the more it was going, the and uh, the more proposal I was getting, I was thinking, you know what, like, it's one lifetime experience. Yeah. Like, it's something that maybe when I will be older and uh, when I will sit my grandchildren, I will be I will be delighted and flattered to, to tell them, to discuss them uh, with it. So I said, why not? Yeah. So... I would not say it changed completely my life, but I would be very arrogant and uh, not nice person if I won't say that it, it was it was something very good that happened in my life. And, and I want to thank my my um, like agent and the director of uh, my modeling agency, my mother modeling agency. Her name is Ia because this woman, she's whatever happens, she's trying to help the girls. She's trying to promote Miss Georgia and to give these girls future opportunity because a lot of girls who were taking a part in Miss Georgia, they even never been aboard. So she really tries to to give them a good opportunity because it's also an opportunity that with whom you, many girls, for example, Miss, uh, when, when they became Miss Georgia, they started a good job and uh, uh, some of them they created their business so it helps you yeah. do you feel pressured to be to look beautiful every single day especially because you're named miss georgia do you feel there's a there's a certain stereotype that you kind of have to keep living up to you can't be seen out without you know looking you know glamorous or wearing nice outfits or with makeup etc do you do you feel the pressure on you to, to uh, look in a certain way you know what, what, what? I never ever felt pressured I always wanted to respect my title um, for example, when it's the first year and you were elected, I didn't want to um, maybe, but I, 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 
even would not say like look in bed or something like this, but I didn't let this pressure me because from young ages, my lifestyle was always healthy. I was never smoking. I was not drinking. I was always workouting. I, it, you know, it sounds a bit even maybe boring, but like a cliche, but it was really my lifestyle. So when, when, when your lifestyle is like this, you don't, you don't feel pressured. But having said this, um, it's a big pressure to be elected because there are also like there, there is always, because how to explain this? you are immediately in hugest attention and yeah. everyone, every single step you are taking, everyone is watching you and yeah. everyone is speaking That's about you. That's what I you. mean, it's tough. Like you have to live but up to this. There's all this attention that you're getting. And again, because you're, sorry, coming back, uh, because you're known for being you know, beautiful, you, you, you have to live with this every day and you, the expectations are set so, so high. It must be quite I, exhausting sometimes, I, no? Well, I think for me, what was hardest part is that you, you, you know, like you always need to fight this title because everyone sees you just a beautiful girl and that's it, and end of the story. Yeah. So I think that it's, it, it's, it's harder because you always have to fight this prescription that you are worth of something. You are not here just for your beauty, that you can be clever. Yeah, you can, you're more, you're more than that. Yes, you, you can have your profession. Your profession is not only to be in front of camera. So for me, it was more more to to show to people that I'm, I'm worth of something. And yeah. this is, I'm not, it's not only about my, my face or yeah. how I look. It's yes. not more about looks. So I, I always, uh, try to balance it but yeah. i i wanted to be georgia because i knew that it would give me a big opportunities it like gives you a I platform, knew right? yes. this, it gives you a platform right again you becoming yeah. miss georgia being part of the miss world competition it gives you a platform to to, to speak to talk exactly. about things that matter to you so exactly it has, but, but it has its drawbacks it has it has its pressures that go along with it um but to be honest uh like i was ready for it because mm, you as, grew as, up because, you, like I you was, said, you grew up in a family. Similar. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I grew up with a family who, yes, who who is known, who is famous, who is very much loved, which was big responsibility for me to not to do ever something that would hurt the feelings of my parents and especially of my father. But um, yes, having said this, I was ready for the pressure. I, I didn't. I like. You know, like there are so many people, as many people are there, as many opinions are there. If you let everything to take deeper into your heart, then you will never see the goal where you yeah. go. So if you if you look at every stone on your way, you will never you no, you no. will never see what is in front of you. So I always try to focus of my goal, of my destination, where I go. And I let the people speak. But because you know what? People will always speak. And even the people yeah. who say bad things uh, about you, uh, the day after you will be successful, will be the first ones who will say something nice about you. So I... I don't let myself to be overexcited when people are telling, oh, you are so good, oh, yeah, you are yeah, perfect, yeah. because I know that, like, no, I'm normal. And I know that it's my mother who will always be honest with me. And She grounds you, because she brings she, you. I even don't have to be grounded. My, mo yeah. my, my mom, I think she grounds me even too much, because for my mom, <laughs> even when, when people are saying to her some compliments about me, she's like, oh, really? You yeah, know, yeah. like, she's someone who is... She, she was a professional swimmer. She she grew up. My my grandpa he was very strict because she you know like she was waking up at five a.m. She was Gosh, going to work out. You have amazing family genes. You got you got direct. You got film directors. You you got you got swimmers. You got musicians. You got all kinds of things. You got, what, what? Uh, my family. The, the, so the name much that fun. I, the family name that I cannot pronounce has has spawned some fantastic uh, talent <laughs> over the, over the decades. Um, so was she a massive influence for you? Would you say your, your mom you know, growing like, up? My, my mom. She's very critical and she's always honest. So I know if she because even my interviews even everything she she looks like she's a stranger so she always tries to find something which she thinks that doesn't go good so she she better improves it and tells mm. me this whether she comes and she tells me that oh you you've been great and i think that since i did all my interviews and all my like projects my tv hosting in my career i think it will be just a couple of times when my mom she really told me like big compliment and wh where she really found me that i i progressed and i grow and that means a lot to you when she says it because she doesn't say it a lot, so when yes. it comes, you know it's, it must be something. Yes, it means, yeah. yeah, exactly. It means a lot of me, and I, I, I prefer like this. Very nice. Because this is how you see that you progressed, yeah. and I think that in life, all what matters is, like, progression. That you grow and you don't you don't stay on, on the same page, on the same place where you are. Yeah. And, and even, you know, having said this, I even tell it to myself, because usually when we speak with the people, uh, we say something that we would like to say to ourselves. So mm. it's message to myself too, that it's good to leave your comfort zone and it's good to challenge yourself because this is the only way how you can grow. Yeah, and that's, that's what you've been way. doing from a very young age. 
Um, this is what I try to do from the very young age. Yes. But you have this focus, you have this determination, you know exactly what you want to, uh, to do and you don't let anyone stand in your way. This is how it sounds to me. Um, talk to me a little bit, once you're now at um, the uh, Miss World competition, yeah. talk to me about the dynamic because we on the outside, we always think the girls yeah. are trying to sabotage each other. They're trying to like, yeah, you, know, and actually, you, know, you know, you watch these movies like Miss Congeniality, right? In the US, <laughs> yes, yes. you see all these like self-sabotage going on across our women are trying to hurt each other. Does that kind of stuff exist? Because no matter what you say, people will still believe that no, yes. there are girls out there that will do anything to win yeah. or to look good versus someone else. So what do you say to that? Um, uh, honestly, I've been on Miss World and I think it's the, it's one of the most healthiest competition is it really ever. really really i can oh. i can say it with my all honesty we were waking up every day at 7 a.m we had workout we had dance classes we had the breakfast all together we were doing a lot of activities we were playing together we but were we were you know like we had our groups yeah. we were like yellow group oh, orange I have group. so many questions I have uh, so many questions yes. <laughs> so so when, you, you, when you see when you see someone who's eating a lot do, do, do you feel like you're you know do you start judging that person oh my god look how much they eat for breakfast look how much they eat for lunch is it like <laughs> that or, or never not like never and you know like it's so fun what people are thinking about the about the miss world or yeah. miss universe well i can i can speak about the miss world like it never been the case you know like never ever and of course there are some girls who who is decide, deciding not to eat or yeah. uh, to be in a, like on a diet or yeah. or or do whatever but it's very very healthy environment it's okay. really it's like really a system you're not just saying that everyone right? everyone you're not just saying this right this is true this is this legit really really okay, honestly like you see you see my yeah, eyes yeah. you know no, eyes, no, they, they are the they, they, they are the mirror of the soul yeah, so yeah. if i was lying you would see this i had really one of the best like it was the best one of the best experience wow. that i will remember all my life like really they are this girl they are amazing they are here on the purpose they, they want it because they have something inside themselves and all of them really like i was there i couldn't believe it in myself they are so kind they are so fun yeah. that all of them they, they are studying they are doing something you know like they help their families they're really like they're really they're really real good women. girls they're real people real people real, real women exactly yeah? it's yeah. real people it, there's so much more like Beauty is really not the point. I'm There's so happy. much more coming out of them. I'm very happy to hear this. Um, did you find that there were different countries who were kind of like, they would congregate together, you know, so they'd have like yeah. three or four always together and you know what I mean, different <laughs> groups. Was that happening? You know, like uh, it was happening, but it's normal because as I told you, like we, we were in the groups. Who are you with? Um, which, which, who's in your group? I was... Uh, Actually, I was with with my with my bit of my neighbors of okay. my country. Okay. So I was with Miss Turkey, Miss Armenia, Miss Ukraine. Um, I was also Miss with, with Miss Bulgaria. Okay. Uh, but I was I was friends with nearly everyone. But my my biggest ma mate and uh, big hello to her tomorrow. Go, it's Miss Bulgaria because we were we were roommates also. Oh my god! And we were the ones we were all the time. Whatever happens, we were on a good mood. We yeah. were laughing. We were the same. So it was so much fun. Really, like we were. And by the way, she was a fan of. Georgian wine too. <laughs> okay. Did she take some with her on the, on the way? I gifted her a bottle. She was so happy. Then when she went uh, back to to UK because she was based at the time in UK, she uh, yes, uh, when she had a glass, I'm sure that she had a glass for me too. <laughs> so look, I, I've been here. I've been wondering this since we've been talking. Um, you don't have a typically Georgian accent. Yes. There is a bit of a bit of a there is a bit of a, a twang in there. Can you explain that to me? <laughs> oh my God. It, it's actually, it's a fun story because every time, you know, even, even when I work um, and when I do my interviews, like I, I was covering like Middle East Fashion Week that yeah. was in Dubai. Yeah. And I was, I was speaking with one of the co-founder and we, we are doing an interview and I'm done. And she, she starts to speak with me in French and, and I'm like, like this. And she's like, ah, oh, but you, you, you don't understand French. And I'm like, uh, I understand, but I cannot speak French because for her, she thought that I, I took an accent. So for her, she thought that, uh, I could speak French, but having said this, so this is a very good uh, wake up call for me to to go back to my uh, French lesson uh, studies yes. and to improve my my French. Why French? Peace. <laughs> <laughs> and we move on. Great, great use but, of the word. But uh, it's one of the most, yeah, I find it one of the most beautiful language okay. and I wish I could speak, but you know, like, if I if I decide to do something yeah. like really with all my yeah. with all my mind and my heart, I will do it. So I think I will like. That'd be I amazing. Think I, I will go back to my studies. Amazing. So I prepared. Uh, actually, you have it already. So in this bag, oh, there, there that's are, why I had the bag, yeah, not yeah, because yeah. of the flight. Not for that. Well, the flight too. It's still <laughs> still buzzing around somewhere. Um, in the bag, there are different balls. So it's my bag of balls. 
and there are different topics relating to a little bit of what we've talked about, right? Okay. So if you could read it out, take a ball out and read it out, and I'll explain to you uh, -na 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 -na. a little bit more about it. Yeah. See what's in there. Pure improv. Oh, oh my god, it's so cute. Funniest story from Miss World. Yeah, so what is your funniest story? Oh my God, story? you know what? This is the most hardest thing ever because every time someone is doing interview, they're like, oh, can you remember the funniest story of your life? And you have so many funniest stories yeah. and at the time you're like yeah, go frozen. Back. You're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't remember anything. Funniest story from Miss World. Oh my God, there were so many. I was what were you and Miss Bulgaria time. getting up to? Were, oh my God, we were, we were having so much fun. We were, we were like, funniest story, but there were so many that I cannot even pick one. First one that came to your mind. What? Usually the one that first comes to your mind. Do you know what? Because e even when we were talking like this, like yeah. me and you were talking, we yeah, were laughing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we were laughing all, all the time. <laughs> well, I think yeah, maybe, okay, it's not the funniest, but what can I do? Because I'm pressured with the time. That's okay, that's okay. It's when we, maybe it's when we had the biggest package of the candies okay. in our room. Okay. And it was a gift for me. Can you believe? Like, Wait, uh, so someone was trying to give you candy. Yes, so I had. I had deliberately a bit, bit, trying yes, to make you. So it was it was brought through through my friend to her to through Margot. your friend. This yes, is, this is the Margot. sabotage I'm talking about. And, someone and, was trying to make you, you know, it's the gain story. a bit of weight before it, the. It's the before. cutest moment. It's the cutest story ever because we yeah. have in our room like this biggest uh, package of the candies, and Margot, she, she's like this, you know, like I feel that she wants to eat like the hugest chocolate, mm. and I'm looking at her, Margot, you want some? And she's like. I would not mind. <laughs> so that we were like before our dinner, you don't know, we were this, with these chocolates that we were eating, and we were so happy, you know. Like, and I, I picked this story up because, like, we were so much on the same level, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, there yeah. were the the same things which were making us happy because no one could believe that, like, how chocolate just or girl, just girls or having fun, that's surprise it. Girls can make you happy, but it was yeah. But, but do you not think someone was trying to sabotage you, both of you? Never, never, never. It never happened. So who sent it? Who sent this bag of candy? Did, did you find out? I knew who said it. Oh, so you do know. Okay. Yes. So is this another peace moment? Are we doing another yeah. peace moment? All right, another peace moment. All right, on that note, let's take, another, let's take another ball out of the bag. You haven't seen any of these, to be clear, right? So you have no idea what's going to be inside. No, of course not. Uh, no. Well, I like, I like to improv. It's more fun. Yes. Yeah, yeah, da, yeah. Da, da, da. What do we have here? Personal goals or world peace? Yeah. So is it more important to achieve all of your personal goals? Yeah. Or like the stereotype is that a lot of people say on Miss World that they want world peace. So what is more important for you? You, you know what? Of course, for me, more most important is world peace because uh, every event which is happening on the earth is just question of the time when they will affect you. You cannot be successful when in, an, in another corner people are struggling and their level of life is below zero yeah. and, and they are dying. So of course... Every time, everywhere in all my life, I hope it with all my heart that I will yeah. never change and I will always choose world peace because this is the only thing what matters. Even even for ourselves, because if we damage all nature and if we don't let this earth to heal and if we don't appreciate all what it gives to us, what personal goals matters? That I will be what? Uh, that yeah. I will have my show, I will be in the TV. Uh, the, everything loses its sense when people are struggling, when people are dying. For me, nothing matters when someone is struggling so world peace there is, there is there's a lot of suffering in the world i mean yes. uh, even time of shooting now yeah you know in you know whenever this is going to be aired or even last week there's always issues there's always challenges yeah. there's always there's still wars happening you know, yes. throughout, throughout and, the world and growing up, growing up in georgia i know what i'm speaking about and i know how much peace matters and you know like in many countries people are waking up and they even like it's not their fault human's nature is like this that we, we don't appreciate something until, until we lose it yeah. but you don't appreciate that how like blessed you are to wake up and to to have this beautiful sky to have this beautiful weather and to have all the opportunities that you have today so growing up in georgia i know i know the the meaning of the peace because we we had so many wars and and i was there when one of the in 2008 when we had the war and uh, I, I know I know what it means, and I know when the people fight for peace, and we always fight for peace, even yeah. in Georgia. And we have a lot of, yeah, we have a, a lot of problems in our country. So yes. I'm so sorry. Yes, I'm so sorry. He wants but to be with me. He wants to be. I with don't me. mind. Look, look, it is, and it's 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 very real. Especially you know, it takes on so much more significance if you've been part of it, if you've seen it, <laughs> um, and if you've witnessed it firsthand. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're far removed from what's going on in, in parts of the world, you know, peace doesn't seem that important. 
but to the people that are experiencing it, going yeah. through it daily, it's it's the ultimate dream. Forget about anything else. So, no, really, thank you for for being honest with that. <laughs> let me let me pick a ball next. You've had enough. Let me ah, have, yes. Yeah, we have to share. Sharing is caring. Yes, sharing, right, sharing is caring. Let's see what we've got. If, by the way, if the fly comes back in the meantime, please feel free. <laughs> Show no peace to that fly. That's what I would say. Ah, yes. <laughs> so, uh, what is the best advice that you would give to um, people that want to become models, aspiring models? Mm. Uh, I would say to be ready to take this like opportunity in your life because it's really hard work. Maybe it doesn't look like this, but it's really, really hard work because sometimes you are 10 hours in front of camera working. So it's really exhausting and it's hard work. And then also to be ready mentally, I would say um, to be rejected because it happens a lot of times you are rejected a lot of times. And when you are growing up, when your body is changing, and w when you are in this like co kind of competition world, it's very hard for you to like to see that you are rejected because then you think that, oh, something is wrong with me. Oh, I didn't look good. So it, and to understand this uh, border that this industry is like this, uh, 100 times you can be rejected, like 200 times you can be accepted. Yeah. But it's more contrary than yeah. the opposite. So for them, I would say that to be ready mentally that you can get rejected and it has nothing to do with you. It's just a profession. It's like this. It depends about the market. It depends about the needs. It about, uh, depends about the trends, how they are changing. And what I see nowadays, I, I love it because we saw so many problems that was happening in the fashion world and, and modeling in industry. We saw so many girls that they were dying because they were not eating. And what, what matters in this life, it's your health. It's your inner health, it's your men mental health, and nothing is worth in this life over your health because health, if it's damaged, you, you, you cannot do then anything. So I really love how the industry is changing now. I, I really love to see Plus size models, I really love to see a diversity because, you know, like, for example, in 90s, the, it was another trend. In 80s, it was another trend. In 60s, it was another trend. So now I'm very happy to see that it's changing. It gives a lot of girls uh, opportunities and we see like diversity. So we see that like there are many nationalities, there are um, like there are many girls of different shapes, size who are there, which is normal because this is fashion. Yes, they, they are creating beauty beauty brands, they are creating something for your face, for your body, the clothing. So it's the real people who are going to wear it. So show us the real world. Yeah, you have to so, represent who, who the audience is. Yeah, of course, of course, because and and because it's so hard when you see always, and especially with the social medias, you know, like we always see the perfect days, perfect faces, the perfect body. So no one sees what happens like on the other side, no one sees your day when you feel, when you don't feel good, when you don't feel pretty, when you are sad. So I think that it's very important to show people the other side too, where yeah. where there is no perfect world, and and to show them that yeah, it's normal that sometimes you won't have a perfect skin. Yeah, sometimes even the models who look perfect all the time, like 24 hours seven, yeah, they have a problem, they have yeah. rashes, they have stretches, and everything. So it's it's so good to promote this and to show this because if not, you have so many problems that you are fighting every day and every day you are fighting like to be accepted many people they are fighting to be accepted and to to kind of fit in this uh, in this trendy social media or fashion magazines trends where everything is perfect yeah. which doesn't exist so i really appreciate when like biggest top models sometimes you know they are sharing their stretch marks and by the way it was also one of the campaign of Victoria's Secret when they didn't edit the woman's body yeah. and they, they they showed because it's so good you see yeah. and you, you you feel healed like you see yourself ah, I have it too so oh it's so good to see on someone of else course, too so course. I, I it's I reassuring like, if nothing else you know yes, that it's not yes in, you know yeah exactly. because no one is perfect yeah F physically no one is perfect yeah everyone even the person who you know you could be the top model in the world, but yeah. inside you, you, oh, I don't like this or I exactly. don't like that. And exactly. it's, you know, everyone feels that. It's the most yeah. human thing in the world and to be flawed. You, you can be like a top model of the world. You can be the most successful person, but no one understands what is happening inside yourself. Yeah. And these people, they then they have another problem because they feel guilty that they struggle because no one can understand their struggle because is everyone it, is judging yeah. them that, oh, you're successful. You're, you, you, you look pretty. You don't have the right to feel sad. Yeah. And, and, also, these people, they, they can, they can, they have their battles yep. that they're fighting every day. So every human being 
is fighting a battle that we don't know. Yeah. So that's why I think that to be kind, uh, it's always the, the best advice you can give to anyone because even your one world can save someone's day that you don't have any yeah. idea what he or she goes through. 100%. Yeah. Nini, that was amazing. <laughs> really, that was amazing. Um, is it lonely being a model? No, it's it's never lonely, actually, uh, because you meet always with the, a lot of people. You always work with the, with a group of people, you know, like you, you always have a crew, you have a makeup artist, you have the hair, hair, hair uh, professional, you have a um, chief of editorial. You, you are surrounded with so many people. It's never lonely. But psychologically, can it be lonely if you're the one person who's up on stage is being looked at no one else you know what it depends about the about the team with whom you work okay. because you can have a team that supports you that is there with you n you never feel lonely you you have the best time of your life and nowadays also this is changing because the the brands and the people they are really like genera generous they try to take care of you so i really love to see this trend that how people are trying to care about you so lonely never okay amazing yeah. I'll do one more and then you, then I'll hand it back to you. Uh, ah, this is similar to what you said. So models, airbrushed or real? So we talked a little bit about this already. So yeah. how, mu how much of what we see on social or on prints or is airbrushed, right? So made to look enhanced visual uh, versus actual real, real, uh, Real looks. You know what? Like uh, before, before a model is accepting, you you send your polaroids and your pictures. They are without makeup. They are with your real hair color. Yeah. Um, you even when when you have a modeling contract, you even don't change anything on how you look. You even don't cut your hair how, however you want. So the all the models they are real. Like I'm I'm speaking about the professional models who are represented by professional agencies. So. All what happens there is real. Then, of course, it depends about the shooting. So, of course, the in the shooting, like you get photoshopped. But the objective is not to change you. The objective is not to, for example, not to make your eye color different or not, or to make your lips uh, appear different or uh, to make your skin color whiter or darker. This is not not the objective. So, of course, there there is a there is a Photoshop because of the light, because of the if they don't like something, but the objective is not to change you. How much percentage of the content that we see, the visuals is actually real? Is it less than 5%? Is it all Photoshop? Is it all airbrushed? Is there any genuine content that's out there that people can look and go, actually, you know what, that's that's exactly how the person looks? Well, you know what, like, for, for example, I was speaking about the Polaroids. Polaroids, they, like, you cannot Photoshop them. You should not Photoshop them. It's like, it's kind of forbidden because the the, the client, he should see mm. how you are. Yeah. And, and, and then they can imagine, like, how you can fit in one or another editorial. And, you know, like, this business is big, so it depends. It depends. Are, are you making, like, uh, photo modeling or are, are you runway model? Because it, it's it's diff it's completely two different worlds, yeah. what you are what you are doing. So I would say that nowadays it's really changing. And I, I won't say that it's photoshopped or airbrushed or they completely change. No, even even the biggest campaigns now, they try to, to minimize uh, photoshopping and I even remember uh, the biggest uh, drama when Kevin Klein's um, editorial launched when there was a featuring Justin Bieber and they made him appear mm. the b biggest muscles yeah. and you 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 remember what the people did it was completely insane and not fun no one liked it yeah. so even biggest brands now they try to respect it and they they, they try to be grounded have to be authentic right? yeah to be, be authentic yes and, and it's and I'm seeing that more and more the trend is not being able to post content that just looks it looks too good to be true yeah. and it scares people off right yeah how the model looks can be like it's a little bit off putting yeah, so yeah yeah because it doesn't i don't know it doesn't make you feel better you know uh, i think we we i mean i i love the era where jenny versace created you know like model stars where where there were the beauties and, and because it was thanks to him that he created that model could become a star because before this no one knew the models by names and they they became like actor and actress and everyone knew them you know like they they knew them for their names so i also love this uh, tendency but i think that this tendency was fitting that time being better so now we are living in in like you know in technological evolution now people's mind is changed yeah. so now people they want reality they want something which is real Especially with all this social media metaverse and everything, you know, like you, you want to feel alive. Yeah. Even and especially the responsibility they have. If you're an advertiser, if you're a brand and you're showing these models are great and you're a teenage girl, you're watching this 
and you're thinking this is how my life should be. It can do yeah. so much damage this person. Yeah, exactly. The responsibility on social media now has to, a lot of it has to lie with the brands and the advertisers and how they want to put the models forward, right? Yeah, exactly. And also social media, they, they really play a very big part because even the filters when they were first created, you know, and people when they went, like even me, you know, like when you see your face completely uh, change or beautiful at some point you can enjoy, but then you understand that, but it's not me. I will yeah. never be like this. And I, like, it's like, it's yeah. fake. So yeah. I shouldn't try to, to be like this. And, and I remember I saw studies. It was uh, done in US how many, how many women they, they went to plastic surgery to change their face because of this. So this I find very sad because it, it, it should serve people and it not should uh, make them even more questioning themselves and giving them even more complex, yeah. you know, like, so, yeah. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of this, but having said this, I, I w even me, I was like, I was enjoying it. I was using, oh, wow, it, it's so good. It changes yeah. so much and you are happy. But then the time goes and you understand that, ah, th no, like, you know, sometimes like, I understand that you want your picture to appear beautiful, you know, like, oh, like why not? And you, you can do it beautiful and you can, you can change something which you think that is not beautiful. Why not? You know, many girls, they are doing it. I've di I have done it too. Like there is nothing, yeah. a crime or something. It's for yourself, in, but not that you are not uh, recognizable, not that people find you for another person and not that you lose your identity because you are special. No one is like you and you should always remember it. 100%. Time for another ball. Yay. Let's see what we have in here. Time in a, so now I will do with my left hand. Do your left hand. Let's yeah. do two more. Let's do two more. So pick a good one. <laughs> ah, yes. What are the model myths? So what are the myths well, about being a model? Well, I think the, the, the biggest myth uh, about the models is that all of them is on diet and they never eat. It's the biggest one because a lot of girls, they choose healthy lifestyle, which is yeah. not, uh, not the diets. And they do eat but they try to eat um, in a small portions and they try to eat healthy things, not junk food, not fast food. So I think it's the biggest meats, but this comes because of the reason, because of course there were many, many girls who are not eating and yeah. who are the problems and, and th there are a lot of materials even in internet and yeah. on the runway, what happened to them, which is so sad. Is. But nowadays everyone tries to to be healthy and, and really to take care about themselves. Even my, my friends who are models, they, even if they are on diet, you know, what is diet? Diet is a like healthy lifestyle and healthy food. It's not that they eat one uh, salad and then they're yeah. like, th then they're done. So yeah. I would say it's, it's this. the quality of the food, not just the, it's not the quantity. Of the food. Yeah, exactly. Which is, which is, uh, which is quite hard because yeah. uh, even financially speaking, you know, sometimes if you don't have a job as a model uh, to buy even this food, which is organic, which is 100% good, it's, it's quite hard. So yeah. they do their best what they can. Any other myths around models? that you would think of? Mm, yeah, well, the, I think the most common myth, which is very sad about models and about the pretty girls is that they are not very clever, which is very sad. Yeah. And uh, I don't know from where it comes, why it comes, why people still think like this. And, uh, and another myth I would say is that, uh, oh, it's an easy job, you just walk. <laughs> because for some people, oh, you're just pretty, you just walk. And they don't see the other side, how hard it is how challenging it is, how many times you get rejected. Of course, it has a lot of benefits. Of course, um, for many people, when they hear that you're a model, they're like, ah, oh, this wow effect, and you get a lot of attention. But all of this has pros and cons. And uh, this is a hard job. This is a very hard job. And many girls, they sacrificed at that time being their studies because you're very limited. Because when you are, when you're like 25, well, before it was like this, when you are in your like 25, 26, you, you begin to be older for this career. Can yeah, you believe like yeah. 25, your, your, your life just begins, like it's your best period of life. But, and if you are not successful in kind of, so it's a lot of pressure, yeah. which hopefully is changing for better. Hopefully. So it makes me very happy. Well, let's do one more. Let's see what we have. Da -da 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 -da. Um, easily labeled or room for growth. So this is exactly what you just said. So when you're a model, you become very easily labeled, right? Yeah. Is it difficult for you to get out of that box, to get out of being a former model or current model? Um, and does it, does it, or does it give you a platform for further growth? I think that nowadays it really gives you a platform 
it really gives you um, even even like all the contests where you take a part it's the hugest platform where people can hear your voice mm. and I would say that even nowadays what is happening with all this technological revolution which is happening now and what is good with internet and all, all the social medias and everything is that everyone can reach anyone so sometimes when when there is a good purposes a lot of people can collect and they can do good things for example i will do my my example that uh, in georgia we have a problem about the um, about the street dogs because there are a lot of dogs uh, which are outside and uh, and uh, then they 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 breed with another dog so it's never ending story and they're in a very very poor conditions so we have a group where there are people, they are sharing the pictures, they are collecting the money, you can participate, and people, like the citizens, they try to help them. So sometimes um, this platform where you can reach someone else, it can be for good purposes. So I would say that, yes, it helps you because yeah. it gives you voice. And anything that gives you voice helps you. But then it's up to you how you how will use, use it. This. Because some people, they can use it for, for the bad, bad purposes. and. Um, Another thing what I learned is that um, clever never means always kind because someone can be very clever but use his cleverness for the bad intentions and someone can be clever and use the intention for good. So it's good to see this barrier and it's still good to like um, be present like and and I don't know like to to take these things like seriously because everyone nowadays gets a platform. So someone uses for good, someone uses for bad, and we had a lot of examples to see it. Nini, I, I, you've you know you've uh, you've surprised me you, you <laughs> a lot. Um, I think you are very charming. I think you're very Thank intelligent. You so I think you're very focused, very passionate individual. Um, you're obviously very determined and very very focused. I've really enjoyed um, getting to know a little bit more about you. Thank you uh, so much for this opportunity. No, no, it's my pleasure. And I think, look, I think the message. If there's a certain type of message that you'd like to uh, leave, um, you know, your own insight and why do you do what you do, I would love to end the show on that. So I'll ask the question, you know, what makes you tick and why do you do what you do? Um, I think that I, w I will go again back to my family because I was growing up in a family when my father was... Um, doing everything for my mom. And in the 90s for the Georgia, it was something which, because you know, for European men, it's, it's like this, they always support their woman, they love the woman who works, who has her career, and they, she not, doesn't sit always in a home doing nothing. So at that time in Georgia, it was very modern what, what, what my father was doing for my mother. And growing up in a family where I saw that my mom, she was successful, she was recognizable, she had a lot of friends, and beside this, she had a very good family where the men loved her very much, and where she also was a mother and had a kid. It was my biggest example to know that it's always important in life, um, whoever you meet, whatever happens in your life, you get married or you never get married, whatever happens in your life, to you have something, what makes you busy and to have something which gives you independence because for women there's nothing more important than to be like independent it's very important and to find someone who who can support you because even in this world whenever you go for the woman it's very challenging and, and it's very hard it's very hard to be successful it, i think that it's harder than for the men and and especially Especially, I would say, now it's changing, which makes me happy, but for, for Georgian women, it was never easy. It was never, ever easy for them, and they are very, very strong, and, and I, I like this tendency. I like when you are one team with your, with your husband, with your lover, with your soulmate, and that you create something big, and that he, he helps you to succeed, and he loves to see you succeed. So I think this is the, the main goal in my life, to, to have always something that keeps me busy. And you're inspiring so many people, especially back in Georgia, where, <laughs> where, where you're, you know, you're one of the most famous people there. So look, it's been a real pleasure having you oh, on the show. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for joining you. me. I'd love to see you again. <laughs> With and, a pleasure. Uh, and I sincerely wish you all the very best of luck. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And I love the time being here. <laughs> Amazing.